I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy. Here with me, Chappellan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. This just dropped from the Wall Street Journal. Epstein's private calendar reveals prominent names, including CIA chief and Goldman Sachs's top lawyer. And where did they get this? Do you think it? I heard uh, Sager say it was made probably the Virgin Islands, but I don't know. I'm just asking. Uh, I don't know, but it's it's a trove of leaked documents that unearth a bunch of people who met with Jeffrey Epstein. And the oh, list is really interesting. That. That's a hot looking sex party, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. The circle of people who associated with Jeffrey Epstein years after he was a convicted sex offender is wider than previously reported, according to a trove of documents that include his schedules. William Burns, director of the CIA since 2021, had three meetings scheduled with, with Epstein in 2014 when he was deputy secretary of state. They first met in Washington, and then Burns visited Epstein's townhouse in Manhattan. Catherine Rumler, a White House counsel under President Obama, had dozens of meetings with Epstein in the years after her White House service and before she became a top lawyer at Goldman Sachs. He also planned for her to join a 2015 trip to Paris and a 2017 visit to Epstein's private island in the Caribbean. Where she had me at Goldman Sachs. <laughs> <laughs> Leon Botstein, the president of Bard College, invited Epstein, who brought a group of young female guests to the campus. Here's the craziest one for me. Noam Chomsky, a professor, author, and political activist, was scheduled to fly with Epstein to have dinner at Epstein's Manhattan townhouse in 2015. None of their names appear in Epstein's now public black book of contacts or in the public flight logs of passengers who traveled on his private jet the documents show Epstein arranged multiple meetings with each of them after he had served jail time in 2008 for a sex crime in involving a teenage girl and was a registered sex offender. The documents don't reveal the purpose of most of the meetings. The Wall Street Journal couldn't verify whether every scheduled meeting took place. Most of these people told the journal they visited Epstein for reasons related to his wealth and connections. Several said they thought he had served his time and had rehabilitated himself. Mr. Botstein said he was trying to get Epstein to, to donate to his school. Chomsky said he and Epstein discussed political and academic topics. Mr. Burns, who's now the head of the CIA, William Burns, met with Epstein about a decade ago as he was preparing to leave government service, said a CIA spokesperson. The director did not know anything about him other than that he was introduced as an expert in the financial services sector and offered general advice on transition to the private sector. They had no relationship. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a good candidate to head the CIA if you don't know about Jeffrey Epstein's background as it's, a registered all, sex offender? They, who, well, you think a guy who's, uh, who's worked in government like that is going to be even phased by something like that? <laughs> you know, it wasn't that long that everybody was like openly like, I love, and still, Roman Polanski. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Take your pick of whatever where they're like, so uh, this is a guy who can connect you with a lot of money. <laughs> what, like, what's not to like? Yeah, yeah. Miss Rumliner, and the, the, again, this is the woman who worked for, she was the Obama White House counsel, Catherine Rumler, had a professional relationship with Epstein in connection with her role at law firm Latham and Watkins and didn't travel with him, a Goldman Sachs spokesman said. Epstein introduced her to potential legal clients such as Microsoft's Bill Gates. And Rumler said, I regret ever knowing Jeffrey Epstein. And furthermore, I feel no loyalty or love of any kind for any human. <laughs> <laughs> I don't form connections for anything other than career and f money. <laughs> in 2006, Epstein was publicly accused of sexually abusing girls in Florida who were as young as 14 years old. The FBI and police investigated, and Epstein reached a plea deal with prosecutors in 2008. He avoided federal charges and pleaded guilty to soliciting and procuring a minor for prostitution. He registered as a sex offender and served about 13 months in a work release program. In 2015, Virginia Guffrey publicly accused Epstein of sexually abusing and trafficking her when she was a teen and forcing her to have sex with influential people, including Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew has denied the allegations and last year reached a settlement over a sex abuse lawsuit. Several people who visited Epstein during this time period said they noticed young women at his townhouse. In 2014, Epstein called Ms. Rum called Ms. Rumler within weeks of her leaving the Obama White House. 
They plan to have lunch and a series of meetings to introduce her to a wider circle of his acquaintances. Over the next few years, Ms. Rumler, then a partner in a white-collar law firm, had more than three dozen appointments with Epstein, including for lunches and dinners. She says she never visited his island and never accepted an invitation or an opportunity to fly with Jeffrey Epstein anywhere. In addition to her current role as general counsel at Goldman Sachs, Ms. Rumler is co-chair of its Reputational Risk Committee, which <laughs> monitors a business and client decisions for potential damage to the bank's image. Like we always say, hang out with them, but don't <laughs> accept an invitation to fly. Or <laughs> Former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak also met Epstein in 2015 with Noam Chomsky, now 94, a linguistics professor and activist who has been critical of capitalism and U.S. foreign policy. Chomsky said Epstein arranged the meeting with Barak for them to discuss Israel's policies with regard to Palestinian issues and the international arena. Epstein arranged several meetings with Mr. Chomsky while he was professor at MIT between 2015 and 2016. When asked about his relationship with Epstein, Chomsky replied in an email, first response is that it's none of your business or anyone's. Second is that I knew him and we met occasionally. Actually, I think that's even stronger response than the, than the Dersh. <laughs> Remember the Dersh, like, shut that shit down? Because Virginia Governor was like, he was one of the people at the island. Yeah. And uh, wait, there was another person that w- was in there that I thought they were named as someone that was seeing, besides Prince Andrew, a couple of slides ago. But I mean, Noam Chomsky, I'm sure, I'm sure, like, I doubt his dick works. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, have no. you seen him? He's like, uh, like, sure. I mean, he's he he's now ninety four years old. This is his not, you know, body looks like Biden's brain. He he was there with his wife, so there's yeah. No, so there's nothing sexual going on with him, obviously. But I do think it's a strange response because he certainly now knows who Epstein is. If he wasn't maybe fully aware of it then, which is possible, maybe he didn't fully look into his background. I, I think it's I think it's better than the chick who's like, I regret ever knowing him, right? Because like. A bunch of people went to that. Uh, Jim Henson got a foot massage on one of them. No, planes. sure, I know, I, I get it. And Chomsky gets approached by a lot of people. Everybody emails him. Every, he was real quiet when it was coming out, though. He it wasn't like he was like, yeah, yeah. I went there. A lot of people did. He, he did. I think, given you know what we know about Epstein and his crimes, it's just this is worthy of a of a more full response, I think. But uh, in March 2015, Epstein scheduled a gathering with Chomsky and Harvard professor Martin Nowak and other academics. Chomsky said they had several meetings at Nowak's research institute to discuss neuroscience and other topics. Yeah, he found he went after scientists hard. Yeah, yeah. Epstein. Yeah, like so it makes sense that he would be trying to get like intellectuals. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Two months later, Epstein planned to fly with Chomsky and his wife to have dinner with them and movie director Woody Allen and his wife Soon Yi Previn. The documents show if there was a flight, which I doubt it would have been from Boston to New York for 30 minutes, Chomsky said, I'm unaware of the principle that requires that I inform you about an evening spent with a great artist. <laughs> Good for him. Because uh, uh, people say Woody Allen's a pedophile. Soon he's like 50. They, they're still married. The pedophiles don't stay with them until they're 50. Yeah, and there was that documentary on HBO that went into that Read whole thing. her other adopted. She abused, course, I believe, the adopted yeah. children of color, what they said, that That's she right. was only good to her kids. She adopted them like a crazy hoarder. And re, like Mia Farrow, I think it's Andre Previn, when she was 17, stole her mom's boyfriend, okay? And Soon Yi, who had a real grudge against her, did the same thing to her. Right. And I mean, it's wildly inappropriate, but that's called being a rich person in New York. And now they're still together and she's 50. So that's not pedo. And there is a son. They have a son who's a therapist, I think. That one, Moses. that one, Moses. He wrote a whole thing about it. And I believe his account, actually. Well. He's got got like MS or something, too, or something like. uh, Yeah, no, he's a therapist. And he's he's written a very strong defense of Woody Allen. It's true. It's true. But I don't take sides in that one, obviously. That's a that's a family. Well, I, I thing, don't you know. it's none of my business, yeah. as Mr. Chomsky said. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Chomsky told the journal that at the time of his meetings, what was known about Jeffrey Epstein was that he had been convicted of a crime and had served a sentence. According to US laws and norms, that yields a clean slate. Yes, not not exactly. I mean Well, uh, not if you don't have a <laughs> zillion dollars to connect someone yeah, with. Exactly. Like, exactly. And if he's convicted of sex crimes, and you know that exactly, like if you're wealthy. It's very easy to get yourself a so-called clean slate, which is exactly what happened Listen, to Epstein. I think Mike Tyson should have been convicted, and I have shaken his hand a few times and would talk to him freely because I don't think he should have been convicted. He served time. So yeah. I can easily see rationalize. Like, I didn't, who knew about Jeffrey Epstein Like besides these 
really connected people. A bunch. Yeah. Of, there's a whole other tier of people that are like, oh, some billionaire. I don't know. It's probably like the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I don't know if Hugh Hefner was secretly recording people. I doubt it, but that was like a really classy Playboy Mansion to go to. I bet. <laughs> CIA director William Burns says he knew nothing about Jeffrey Epstein when they met twice at night in Epstein's home in 2014. Never mind that Epstein was a registered sex offender and pled guilty to prostitution with a minor. I don't believe this guy. In 2008. Upshot, the CIA Burns are full of shit. Yeah, like with CIA, like there's no, there's no goddamn way that you don't know, especially after, who was the DA in Florida that... That when you know they go, why'd you why'd you let him out? And he was like, he was I like, was told he was an intelligence asset. Yeah, he belongs to intelligence. That's right. So, yeah. and yeah. then I've heard people dispute that. I'm like, you know, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Uh, here's Caitlin Johnstone, Woody Allen, Jeffrey Epstein, and Noam Chomsky go out to dinner. <laughs> There's no punchline. That's just what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it would be stupid to infer from Chomsky's Epstein associations that he's a pedophile or even that it, it invalidates the past work he's done. But it's also stupid to act like people are being weird or inappropriate for making a big deal about his Epstein He advocated concentration camps for people that didn't get vaxxed. <laughs> yes, he did. Here's, here is a joke uh, from Austerity Cornflakes. So apparently Epstein invited Chomsky <laughs> on his jet. You hear about this? Yeah, apparently he wanted to find out how to manufacture consent. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. You hear about this? <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, Jimmy Dore says, I was gobsmacked <sighs> when Chomsky advocating separating the unvaxxed yeah. from society where getting food was their you problem. He wanted a Holoma door for them. Yeah, Chomsky did say that. He did. That was after he called Medicare for all candy. Oh, that now doesn't he, look good with the Epstein thing. Now he talks <laughs> like this about hanging out with Epstein. Holy shit. What I said is what I would like to hear from Noam Chomsky is why he met with war criminal at Hood Barak and what they discussed. That to me is well within the public interest. Wasn't so, he one of the ones uh, uh, getting in with the girls? Ehud? That's what I remember hearing when it first came out. He was uh, accused of that the same as. Uh, I don't know. Not like the others. Uh, Ehud Barak, I thought, was Barak, one of the yeah. named like, yeah. well, like uh, regular <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. players club members. Um, you know, Chomsky has been a vocal critic of Israel his whole life. And Ehud Barak has committed war crimes. And I think, you know, Chomsky being a vocal critic of Israel, having written multiple books about Israel, I think I find it odd that we had to learn about him meeting with an Israeli leader, Ehud Barak, through this. I, I, I'm surprised. Well, I guess it didn't go comment. anywhere based on the situation. Well, they did meet. And, and like, you know, Chomsky might say in his defense, I was there to collect information. It, you know, Ehud Barak's a world leader. If you have a chance to tell this guy to his face. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I would want to do it. Right. Well, I, I, I'd I like didn't to, know anything about. Right. Nobody knew about no. Epstein like that back when that happened, did they? Nobody. The, Fair enough. Fair enough. So I mean, Florida he has, charges? It's Florida. You probably could like, yeah. I don't know. Who yeah. knows what it is? I don't need to know. Well, now that it's out, I mean, maybe he had reasons for keeping it private. It's his thing of it's none of your business, but I do like, I uh, I think you're right. That's probably not the best way, but I also like when somebody is saying to the internet, like, why do you mind your business? <laughs> uh, reminder that just Lane Maxwell. Lane, you G sound ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is, is, is that is it? No, I don't know. A, I've been saying Jizz Lane for three years. It's G Lane. All right. Well, Jizz Lane, G Lane, Maxwell's trial. She should be was, sentenced to be named Jizz Lane. That should be part of the sentence. Was held behind closed doors, and all written and recorded records of the trial have been sealed for one hundred years. Longer I, than the JFK. Damn, I didn't and know Pfizer. that. Pfizer, are you joking? A wow. hundred years. Well, I'm sure there's nothing massively government shattering about the information. We'll have to. Fa is that true? It's been still a hundred. We'll if it's a hundred years, yeah, we'll have to fact check that. that means, but if that's true, that's, that means yeah. guilty. There's no way you would seal that that long, unless uh, like right at the top, they're all in on it. A hundred years. Who would you have to protect like that? Well, the mystery deepens now that we know who else Epstein met with, and maybe we'll get some more extensive explanations from the people involved especially this makes me mad like well i yeah. watching you know i like i watch the hill and i watch uh i don't know if they talk about bringing points but on the hill they're so careful and you know, i like brianna and uh, even that guy robbie yeah they, you could see them taking such care to not maybe suggest <laughs> that there's a hundred years <laughs> guilty 
We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special. COVID lies are funny. <laughs> <laughs>